Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I have another haul. I've got four fragrances for you guys and as you can see from the title, one is a long time coming. So I was really excited to get that one in particular but obviously I was excited to get all of them and I actually, if I'm being completely transparent, I did use it and it's not a full kind of first impressions on camera because for those situations where it's like years in the making and I've really like even I get too excited to to wait so we're gonna start off I have one sample and three full bottles like I said and two of the fragrances I have not tried and we're gonna try on camera so without further ado if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it Okay, so starting with the sample, I'm really not gonna spend that much time on it. Surprisingly, I don't know if I'd ever tried this before. I mean, okay, I have definitely tried this before, but I couldn't really remember it, and it, was, it wasn't one that I could have like recalled off the top of my head. And it was, it's Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. So uh, I, I was intrigued. Um, to kind of remind myself and this has if you're not familiar, which I'm sure a lot of you are has orange blossom mandarin bergamot or um, Orange blossom sorry and orange Turkish rose jasmine mimosa ylang ylang patchouli white musk vanilla vetiver tonka and a poponax When I smelled it and I have yet to compare to be able to let you guys know but maybe in one of those like dupe videos because I know you guys liked that. I have to smell it against Jill Sander Eve because when I smelled it, I was like, oh, it kind of reminds me of that. And not in a good way in the sense that like that one was also a letdown and it's way more affordable than, um, yeah, than Coco Mademoiselle. I just... I know it's a classic and I'm sure it works for a lot of you and if it does then by all means. It's got a very like bright citrusy opening but it's not like I feel like if I'm going to go for a classic from the range um, or from the house I would 100% go for Chanel number no. 5. The Eau de Toilette in particular which oh actually it's not up there um, but I, I love and if I'm going to go that classic route that's the way I'm going to go. This. The, the patchouli citrus mix is just not really my jam. So I'm glad to have just been able to kind of remind myself of it because some of you guys have commented what I thought about it and I couldn't really remember. So yeah, uh, it's not for me. I will not be getting a full bottle, that's for sure. But that is Coco Mademoiselle. Now we can go on to, oh my gosh, my beloved. So this is Love, Chloe. And a lot of you actually have mentioned that for someone who has a bunch of Chloe fragrances and likes them and who loves powdery, makeup-y, lipsticky fragrances, like I need Love Chloe in my life. And I agree with you. It's just very hard to find. It's been discontinued for some time. So I had to wait for a situation where I could get it, you know, secondhand. Um, and here she is. The chain is very delicate and it is broken. I could probably fix it, but it doesn't really bother me. And it's almost full. So I was so happy to get this. This has orange blossom, pink pepper, iris, hyacinth, um, heliotrope, wisteria, powdery notes, rice, and musk. And like I said, <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I've already worn it twice and I've just recently gotten it. Um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? I really do love it. There is something, and I know I'm gonna be in the minority with this, but there is something about this that reminds me of, and only in the opening, it reminds me of those like um, pink bubble gums that at least you can get in North America that came with like a little tattoo. Um, they're like flat, I guess they're double bubble, but like they just remind me of my childhood for a very brief moment in the opening. It reminds me of that. And I love it. It is so delicious and powdery and sweet. I definitely get like rice powder um, sweetness and I love rice, rice powder as a note. And it's such a sweet iris as well. It's not like a super papery, which isn't everyone's jam. This is like my favorite type of iris. 
Oh my God, I just love it. I'm so, so happy to have this as part of my collection. The two times I've worn it also, I don't know if it's just, I'm still in a very like honeymoon phase with it, but I feel like it had pretty good lasting power as well. It wasn't like completely disappearing on me, which in the summer months, everything lasts on me for like 10 minutes tops. I don't know what happens, but every time I like get some sun, nothing lasts on me, unfortunately. And this actually stuck around, so I really do love it. I cannot say enough good things. I'm so, so, so happy to have it in my life. So for all of you who are wondering what I felt about Love Chloe, now that I have her, the hype is real. If you like powdery fragrances, like sweet powdery, I feel like it's much more of like a sweet face powdery fragrance than lipsticky, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I love it. Cannot say enough good things about Love Chloe. All right, so now we're gonna get to the actual blind buy first impressions. I have not opened these and I am pretty excited about them. So these were Marshall's finds and they were very inexpensive and I was intrigued. So this is from La Maison de Le Bousson and I kind of heard about this range because I'd heard about their, or I'd read about their Neroli fragrance. And so when I looked up these two scents, for whatever reason, and it's a French fragrance house, obviously, I could not find these two scents. This is Neroli and Suede, which is the one we'll start with. I couldn't find the notes or anything. I did find Neroli, which is a women's fragrance. This might be unisex, it might be men's, like, it was just too good of a deal. It was like less than 20, maybe it was like, so like 11 or 15, I'm not sure, but I was like, why not? I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Let me get into it. I love Neroli, obviously you guys know, and I love suede. It's a pretty nice bottle, I have to say. It's got a plastic top, but the glass is really heavy. Again, I have no idea if this is men or women, men's or women's or unisex. It's 100 mil for like 11 to $15, and it's an eau de parfum, so. We'll discover it together. This is truly blind in every sense because I don't even know the notes unless it's just Neroli and Suede. But let's see what I think. Ooh, okay. To me, if I had to guess, it's unisex ma like male leaning rather than feminine. It doesn't smell super feminine to me. It's got like a, a zingy kind of like a bergamot citrusy opening with some beautiful like neroli oil that it's still, um, it's still like bright. I feel like it's not, it's not overly floral at all. Yeah, it's nice. It, it reminds me of something that could be like an Aqua di Parma fragrance, honestly. It smells very Italian. The suede is very soft in this. Uh, maybe it'll develop longer. Maybe it'll be more so in the base and it'll get a little bit more grounded. But right now, it's actually, it's actually really nice for heat, I imagine. It's very bright. And yeah, I would say more so masculine, but unisex. If you like a lot of Aqua di Parma fragrances, which I do, um, you'll pretty much be into this kind of vibe. Ooh, okay. All right, so that's Neroli and Suede. And then the second one I was equally as intrigued by because of the notes. So this is Sea Sage and Tonka. Very, very intrigued. So I guess this one's also gonna be kind of more male leaning. Um, the Neroli fragrance that I originally was telling you guys about that I had heard about. Ooh, I love the color of this one. Um, that one came, like it looked like it was in a different bottle and that one was definitely just for women. So maybe this is what the men's bottles look like, but who knows? Oh, it's kind of hard to spray. Let's see. Oh, okay, this one's quite herbaceous. It's a little bitter. This one's even more uh, masculine. This one also has like a cocktail scent to it. I'm intrigued, okay. This has, it's, it's, it smells very, it doesn't smell actually too salty, but it smells very beachy 
for a, like a men's perspective on like a beachy fragrance because it's not floral. It's not like it's got ylang ylang and coconut or anything, but it it's very um, like driftwood and sea salt and not aquatic, but it's like woody beachy. I do like it. This reminds me of kind of, it could be an also an Aqua du Pomero, but this reminds me of maybe like a Prada. Yeah, it reminds me more of like something Prada would do with a men's fragrance. So interesting. Again, really good for this time of year because it's very um, like reminiscent of like being by the sea, which makes sense, sea sage and tonka. I actually don't get any tonka. I feel like it's not creamy at all. It's not sweet. It's way more obviously salty and kind of woody and maybe some lemon in there. Interesting. Okay, so I did want to let you guys know because I was very curious and I know that La Maison de Aubusson fragrances are making their way. They're showing up in like Winners and Marshalls and TJ Maxx, those kinds of stores around uh, North America at least. So if you're intrigued, they are kind of male masculine leaning, at least these two are, but but yeah, I would say the Neroli and uh, Suede one is a bit more unisex, but this is a really nice fragrance if you wear men's fragrances and are into it. It's actually pretty intriguing. So. Those were the four fragrances. As always, I will put them in order. I think in last place, it goes without saying, I would put the Coco Mademoiselle. It's just not my vibe. I will compare it to Jill Sander Eve, which I also haven't worn in a very long time because it's not my vibe. But yeah, that's an easy fourth place. In third place, it's gonna be hard, a little harder, but I would put Sea Sage and Tonka just because I feel like there's less months out of the year where I'm going to wear it. It's a little bit bitter um, and a little bit more like full on masculine. In second place, though, and I liked it a lot more, is Neroli and Suede. I feel like as it's developing on my skin, it's getting even more kind of like warm, and I really did like it. It is light. I don't know how well it's going to last because it's already quite light on my skin, especially like I said with the whole summertime tan skin eating up fragrance for some reason, but I am intrigued to wear that and do some wear tests. And in first place, of course, my beloved Love Chloe. I can't wait to just wear this over and over and over again. It is such a stunner. So that was a quick haul. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below which one of these fragrances you have tried or that you'd like to try, especially if you tried Love Chloe. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.